Hey guys, my name is Alex Barham. It has been three years and like 20,000 views later. It's probably about time to update what the best beginner whitewater kayaks are. So first of all, a lot of this is gonna come down to the fit that you have in the boat. So demoing in person is an irreplaceable part of this process, but my goal is to help you be, get to that point better educated and make a better decision in the long run. So part of this is gonna have a lot to do with where you wanna go and what you wanna do. If it interests you to just pursue play boating, then that's something. Um, if you're more generally interested in whitewater kayaking, then we're gonna be focusing more on putting you into a creek boat and letting you find something more sporty down the road once you have your fundamentals down you've learned a couple runs. So you're gonna notice that this is very heavy on boats that are nine foot long, look more like traditional kayaks. They're not gonna be the more sporty half slices, stuff like that. First and foremost, we're gonna cover things pretty quickly in this video. For more information about every single one of these boats, go look in the description of this video and I'll have links going out to all of the individual reviews I've done on each of these that can give you a 10 minute deep dive on each one of these boats. Let's start off with probably the most beginner tailor boat out there, which is the Jackson Zen 3. This thing is as cushy as it gets for a soft landing just coming into the sport. It is very simple to drive, goes in a straight line easily. It's wide, it's very stable. It isn't overly fast, so you're gonna have time to make decisions getting where you go, but it has a competency to it to where you are not going to be bringing a fork to a gunfight, you know? You're going to be able to paddle solidly into the beginning of class four from your very first day on the river in this boat. It is going to be easy to roll, easy to outfit and adjust, it's really tailor-made for this, but the back end is gonna be that, yes, at some point you can expect to outgrow this boat and sort of be held back by it when you're kind of at the end of its lifespan anyway. So hopefully you wear the boat out, then you're gonna replace it. If you have a little bit of experience kayaking uh, and you're a more finesse-based person, you want a boat that is going to take care of you as you're getting your first couple runs in, but kind of mold you into a more technical paddler down the road. I really like the series from Zet Kayaks, uh, which unfortunately is a little hard to understand because each size has a different name, but the Z Block, Raptor, and Director, if you look at all of these together, they're the same boat, they're three different sizes. I'm just gonna call it the Raptor, but these boats, they are a little bit short, a little bit slower than some of the other modern creek boats out today, but what they do is they take really good care of you with a nice wide package. They have light, simple outfitting, so especially for smaller paddlers looking at the Veloc, they are going to be easy to move around, paddle, maneuver, load onto your car, all of those things. Extremely durable, lasts a really long time, is going to be able to be paddled up into class four and five. You're not gonna outgrow this boat nearly as fast. One of the things that I really harp on when it comes to these is that they're going to teach you how to properly paddle. That means that they are going to reward and punish you a little bit for leaning forward when you need to, leaning back when you need to, being on your right or left edge when you need to. They are going to guide you and mold those instincts that come along the way in terms of how to establish a sense of boat control and to do things properly. Again, as mentioned, for smaller paddlers, children, this block that's the small size in this run is absolutely far and away my pick that I'm gonna put you in. It is just gonna be the best deal. So one of my personal favorite boats 
that I have been in for a really long time and I just keep coming back to and back to when I can choose to paddle really anything uh, is the Piranha Machno. This is just the boat. If you ultimately want to be running really manky creeks and waterfalls, that's where your goals lie, I'm probably gonna put you into a Machno. Basically, I would describe the Machno as a very user-friendly, kind of like lifted pickup truck of the whitewater world. It wants to just climb up and over and bulldog its way through everything. Especially with steep, rocky, waterfall-filled runs, this can give you a sense of confidence that is just almost unmatched. So if you know yourself and you know that you are going to get in a boat and immediately and go as fast as you can towards dropping off waterfalls and doing crazy things, this is the boat I'm gonna put you in. It is going to get you there the soonest and you're probably gonna stay upright the longest in it. It's also a really high and dry ride, boofs really easily. It's probably gonna take the best care of you in that environment. So for someone who's ultimately aspiring to be there, this is gonna get you there. The Dagger Code. This is the newest creek boat on the market right now. It is a replacement for what was a really classic beginner goat, which was the Mamba. The Mamba was famous for a really long time for being a high performance boat when it came out that had this tailing legacy of being an amazing beginner platform. The code is stepping this up. It is more modern, not quite as beginner friendly as uh, it used to be, but in terms of something that is gonna really have legs on it, it's gonna stay around, it's gonna allow you to grow into it. There's really no top end for the code. Once you figure this boat out, the sky is gonna be the limit. It's not something that you are going to outgrow and need to replace. You're gonna be able to paddle this boat till it breaks and replace it. Top of the line outfitting, but the one thing that you're gonna notice uh, is that it is gonna be a little bit heavier. Now, all that said, the code is not the replacement as a beginner boat that the Mamba was. This is a boat that, while you absolutely could paddle as a beginner, it is going to expect more from you. So if you are a more athletic person, a fast learner, someone who has a lot of confidence going into this, the code is a great choice. You are going to have a little bit rougher of a transition going in, but if you stick it out, you're gonna be fine and you're gonna wind up ahead down the road because this boat is just gonna last a long time and you're gonna be happy in it for a long time. Now, all of that said, we have not discussed at all learning in a half slice. You are gonna see a lot of guys out there in boats that look like a creek boat with like a tadpole stern. These are awesome boats, but there's a really narrow window in which you should be learning in them. So I'm gonna turn it over to Hannah because that was her experience and she can tell you all the pros and cons as why you would or would not wanna do that. So learning in a half slice is a little bit different because you're bringing a lot less boat to the fight, essentially. That has some things that are really good about it and some things that some might consider drawbacks, but I'm biased. I learned at half slice and I thought it was great. If you're a smaller paddler like me or someone who's very concerned about strength, by having less boat, some of those strength heavy skills that you're trying to learn in the beginning, like rolling and ferrying, all of that are going to be a lot easier in a half slice than in a full size creek boat. While creek boats are very friendly, they are also very forgiving. So when you do make those mistakes like leaning on a wrong edge or something, you may not necessarily get the feedback immediately to know that that was something you weren't supposed to do. Whereas if you do that in a half slice, you're gonna flip. Um, and that's another advantage and disadvantage is that your role in a half slice, if you're learning in one, is probably gonna get really good because you're gonna have to do it a lot. That said though, if you have bad shoulders or if you're learning in a really shallow river, that may not be the avenue that you wanna go. Learning in a half slice is great in class two and three, but once you go to class four, you absolutely should buy a creek boat. The reason for that is, is because in class four, there's suddenly a chance that you could be pretty seriously injured and a lot of those features suddenly have a lot more power. 
So having a boat where your stern can walk away from you in a way you're not expecting is suddenly gonna work against you. That said though, you're probably not going to be selling your half slice when you do buy that creek boat, so it makes it a good investment. You'll probably keep your half slice for those days on class two and three, especially because half slices are a lot better at surfing than a creek boat. I think if you're someone who's a little more undifferentiated and you're not sure if you're gonna be more of a creeker or a play boat, this is going to be a really good pick for you. I think that the Antics 2 is far and away the best beginner half slice on the market. The Antics 2 is the only one on the market that toes the line between a half slice and a play boat, whereas pretty much every single other half slice on the market right now is more trying to toe the line between a creek boat and a half slice. So the Antics is going to be a little bit shorter and a little bit slower, but what that does is it makes it a lot more friendly to surf. And it's definitely one of the wider designs on the market, which also helps it be more stable. It doesn't have as much bow rocker as most of your creek boats, but compared to some of the other half slices out there, it does have a decent amount. So it makes getting up and over holes good, but you're just gonna have to give it a lot more oomph. That's one of the oddities, I guess, about learning in a half slice. I've also spent a lot of time teaching new paddlers in play boats. So even though that's not the trendiest option right now, there's definitely still some rivers where a play boat is absolutely the way to go. So if you are on one of those rivers or you really don't think that creaking is for you, you just want to play around and have fun on waves, what kind of play boat should you get? The most important thing about play boats is really the fit. So it has to be something that's comfortable and but at the same time that's tight. So Alex often compares it to being like a ski boot. I think for play boats, really the most important thing is that you're looking for one of the more modern ones. So I would say anything released in the past five or so years that has a really wide stern and is really short, those are going to serve you the best. And like learning in a half slice, learning in a play boat is gonna teach you to punch holes really hard with everything you've got. Creek boats are gonna feel like cheating afterwards and your roll is going to be incredibly on point. You're probably not gonna to have to worry about that later on. The last thing that I wanted to talk about is sizing for beginners. So Alex has a different really good video where he talks about how if you're kind of in between weight ranges or you're not entirely sure where you are, you should err on the side of going up a size. So for beginners, and especially those of us beginners who are smaller and probably lacking some strength that is gonna need to build over the next couple seasons, I would actually recommend going small and just knowing that when you outgrow your beginner boat and buy that second boat, you are going to go up a size. All right, so when have you outgrown beginner boats? Well, the purpose of this video was actually to pair you into boats that are not beginner boats. They are boats that you will be able to learn in, grow into, right? So first of all, the best boat is the boat that you are going to stay in the longest and keep in your quiver long-term as you build out and get more toys. However, there are times where you just didn't bring enough boat. Specifically, you may find that maybe you got a little bigger and that boat is starting to get slow and bargy might be time to step up a size. Maybe you're starting to notice that the beginner boat that you bought just isn't keeping up and uh, maybe your friends are able to do some things that you can't do. Well, this is a great time to borrow a boat, take a demo of a friend's boat, play around, figure out what you like and what you might want in your next boat. Watch some reviews, we've got a lot of good ones up and Figure out that next purchase over time. Don't snap, make a decision. Don't buy whatever is new and trendy with some team boater. Make an educated decision, spend your money wisely, then you won't regret it in the end. Now, really quick, I do want to acknowledge the fact that this gear is not cheap. Uh, it does come with a price tag and it can be a little bit of an eye opener. The thing I would say about it is that these boats last a long time. They're not a one season purchase. You are absolutely going to get your value back out of it, especially to consider that when you're done with it, it has a resale value that's, you know, about half. So with all of that said, if you are going to buy a used boat, still do your research, try to find a 
review or something about it, don't buy just based on the price tag. You want something still that is relatively recent that you can outfit well, you know, not something from the early 2000s or 90s. However, when it comes to buying gear beyond your basic boat and paddle, it is very important that you think about what you're doing. You never want to buy a used helmet, a used PFD, or a used throw rope. Those should be brand new and replaced as needed at an absolute maximum three years. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is not the place to save a penny. Don't do it. So that's it for today. Like I said, links to all of those reviews are down below. Check them out. Ask questions in the comments. I respond to all of them. We are here to help you make that purchase right the first time and enjoy this sport. So welcome. It's an amazing community. We'll see you out there.